The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-host and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on our live shows. Broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts, this is the Firearms Radio Network. The bandwidth for this episode of This Week in Guns is sponsored by Patriot Patch Company. PatriotPatch.co Welcome to This Week in Guns. This show is brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network and Patriot Patch Company. And the show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Sean Heron. As always, every week, it is my pleasure to introduce our panel tonight. First up, we've got a creative thinker with a passion for things that go bang, the creative director for Athlon Outdoors, Ken Ross. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Happy to be here. Next up... You hear his name every single episode. We have the producer of This Week in Guns, home theater installer, and too many other things to list, my man, Kenny Ortega. What's up? Uh, not much. It's good to be on here with you. Glad to have you both, man. It was the night of the Kens. We got the Ken Kens and the Kenny. Rule. Kens rule the world. <laughs> exactly. I right. feel so outmatched right now. Uh, but you know what doesn't leave me outmatched is my Patriot Patch Company Patch of the Month Club. I don't know. So, Kenny, I know that you... Uh, have a bunch of Patriot Patch Company stuff, right? Oh yeah, I got a whole board full sitting over there, right across the room there. Yeah, absolutely love them. Ken, how about you? I need some Patriot Patch. <laughs> I I am neglecting my Patriot Patch Patch fix. I need to get that taken care of. Let me ask you this, Ken: Are you in fact a patch uh, addict like the rest of us seem to be? I have a safe. Every time I go to NRA or Shot Show, I try not to be the patch collecting nerd, but I do end up coming home with five or six <laughs> that uh, go inside of my safe. So I love it. So uh, if you haven't seen them and you're listening right now, go check out PatriotPatch.co. Absolutely, lots of fun stuff there. Patches, cleaning mats, t-shirts, and all kinds of other great stuff as well. In fact, a lot of your favorite content creators sell patches through Patriot Patch Company. So go check them out, patriotpatch.co. And then Manticore Arms next up. Uh, I was actually just ordering a bunch of AK parts from them today. I got a triangle stock. I got the Alpha 4 end and top cover, which is a uh, key mod, I believe. And that is to improve one of the AKs that I have. It's a Kalashnikov USA. And... I'm really unhappy with the way it looks. It kind of came all decked out and tap code out in a bunch of uh, CAA stuff. So it, it is time to uh, take it, to take it, to move forward and to kind of get over it. And that's easy to do through Manticore Arms. So go check them out. ManticoreArms.com coupon code TWG10. If you've got an AK, AR or any other kind of uh, firearm, they make parts for all kinds of them. Go check them out. ManticoreArms.com. And guys, it is time to get into the stories uh, first off, we're going to talk about some good Samaritans. We've got three wounded in Oklahoma restaurant shooting, and the shooter is killed by two good Samaritans. This comes to us from CNN. Uh, pretty much exactly what the headline says. Uh, guy runs in, starts shooting some people up. Two people run out to the cars, get guns, and and, and shoot the, the bad guy. I think, you know, kind of perfect, perfect outcome to a terrible. The shooting, there was. I love autoplay video. Uh, perfect outcome to kind of a terrible thing. Um, thoughts on this one, guys? Go ahead, Kenny. You first. Okay. And then he cut out. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Then. All right, Ken, you're up. All right. Well, I thought this was a, a win for uh, good guys. You know, of course, the NRA came in a little later and did their typical tap dance. You know, a good guy with a gun stops a uh, bad guy is the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun. And we've seen that that's not true uh, already this week. Uh, you don't always have to have a gun to solve the problem, but it is nice when that is the case. When the other guy has a gun, uh, it does make it uh, a little easier on you. Uh, it was great that they stopped the uh, the threat. Um, uh, it was not so great that they had to run out to their car and get it. I'm yeah. not sure what their situation was, but what, you know, I always tell, uh, you know, I teach firearms also, and I always tell students that their cars don't need protecting. You know, the, the gun in the car is not doing a whole, doing them a whole lot of good. So. Yeah, I completely agree. Kenny, you there? Uh, hopefully. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, what were your thoughts on this one? Uh, basically the same thing. It just uh, surprised me that these, you know, not one, but two people had to run out to their car to get guns in order to stop the threat. Um, 
you know, it, it's kind of hard to be an armed citizen if if it's in your car when, you know, the time comes that you're elected to do something. If you don't have the gun there, you, you may not be effective. You may not be, you know, have the chance to make it to your car. So, you know, you really need to take it seriously if you're going to be an armed citizen and carry all the time. Yeah, and it, it does turn out that uh, both armed citizens were able to um, to make contact and uh, trade lead with with the bad guy. So the situation was kind of weird. The shooting stopped, and then the two guys kind of headed to the parking lot, and they saw just some twenty year old kid walking along the sidewalk wearing uh, ear protection and eye protection, like you'd have at the shooting range. And then they kind of exchanged gunfire, and the guy went down. So kind of an interesting situation. I agree with everything you guys said. I'm like. Carry your gun with you. Uh, they got lucky that they had time, but yeah, just kind of a weird situation. And not to be outdone, Shannon Watts from I don't know Mom's Demand Action or whatever whatever group she does. I don't. I honestly don't even know. But let me read this quote to you guys. It says, "Bad guy gets a gun, shoots three at Lake Hefner restaurant, and the NRA calls it a victory." Uh, in other high com- income countries, bad guys don't get guns. People don't get shot at restaurants, and armed strangers don't have to risk their lives in the line of fire. Which I'm like, no, they just get you know blown up and blown ran up over and stabbed and right. yeah, exactly. They use all kinds of other methods of killing thousands of people. Um, yeah, Shannon likes to be in the press, and uh, she does a very good job of putting herself in front of a camera and defending her cause. Uh, what job does Shannon actually have? Is she def- is she defending her money? Is that what it sounds like that to me? She works really hard at this, and it sounds to me like she's watching out for her money. Yeah, something something's weird to me. I don't know. Uh, yeah, she, so she went off on Twitter multiple times, and I just just makes me laugh. She's just kind of silly, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, way to take only one half of the story, though. I mean, it's just. Uh... You know, more of the the typical left argument where, you know, ignore the good stuff that happens or, you know, the fact that people are able to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, uh, you know, basically someone with a gun did something horrible. So that's what we need to focus on. Yeah, there was one thing in here that she said that that I actually took true offense to. Um, Let's see. She basically said that we always talk about the good guy with the gun and the bad guy with the gun. And, And granted, I I'm not a huge fan of that that narrative, but gosh, I I can't find it. I know when I read it earlier that that it was kind of ridiculous. Oh yeah, here we go. Yes. The man who shot four people inside a restaurant, including a 12 year old child was an armed citizen to which I'm like, well, he's also a criminal, right? Like thousands of people, millions of people drive on the roads every day and they're all legal, lawful drivers until they're not until they get into a high speed chase or get a DUI or crash into somebody because they're being negligent and looking at their cell phone. Like we can play that game all day with every single thing that, I mean, everything I see in the room around me, we could play that game with. So she's just dishonest. Yeah. She's, she's being a negative Nancy. Uh, It would be, it would make a lot of sense for her to say, I'm really glad that it turned out the way it did. So many, you know, saving a lot of people from being harmed and, uh, you know, just stopping there. Yeah. And just moving on from there. But, uh, you know, she has to come in and, uh, bash gun culture as well. Yep. Next story. We, oh, go ahead, Kenny. I was just going to say, maybe we should just focus on saying legally armed instead of armed citizen or good guy with a gun. Yeah. I don't, I, she'd figure something to complain about on that one too. I'm sure. Probably so. Next one, Las Vegas teacher arrested for planning hashtag me Too murder spree. This comes to us from blue lives matter. And Wow, what a story. So a Las Vegas physics teacher said that she was going to kill herself and others during an upcoming concert. Uh, the concert was, well, who was it? All There Remains, I believe. So really, really heavy metal. And I actually like this band. So it was or, uh, Life of Agony. Sorry, Life of Agony. Was, she was going to go there um, while her favorite song played and put a lot of holes in a lot of people. That is a direct quote from her text messages to one of her friends. Her friend said, wow, uh, something's obviously wrong here and reported to the police. She's been arrested for making terroristic threats now. And her students all say she was just really super weird, always shared way too much personal information. And uh, it didn't sound like they were incredibly surprised. Uh, Ken, (laughs) thoughts on this? Well, I just it makes me go back to a uh, uh, episode of Big Bang Theory when Sheldon said, do be crazy. Yeah, I I think that she was 
off her rocker and uh, I applaud her friends for having enough sense to go to the police and not just looking past this and uh, going to the police and reporting her. So true, man. I'm just like the, this whole story, I, like from her mugshot to everything was, was uh, kind of weird to me. Uh, Kenny thoughts. Uh, looking at her mugshot, she looks like, you know, your typical lot lizard. She's just, uh, she, you know, she's been through some, some rough stuff. You could tell. Yeah. Um, but th- you know, I'm just glad to see that her friend actually stepped up and did the right thing and reported it instead of just uh, discounting it as uh, just some lunatic talk. Yeah, which, which makes me think. Uh, I'm like, if anyone texted me stuff like this, I would immediately be on the phone with 911, and I, I would call like a scientist and an exorcist as well, because obviously there's some big problems here. I guess maybe I just don't hang out with people like this, so I, because I, it just seems so foreign to me that someone would text someone else messages like this. But yeah, she wanted to. Uh, Let's see. Her quote is maybe I'll start a movement, another me too movement, but this time in which women feel empowered enough to become serial killers. So is there a problem in the women's movement where they feel like they're not enough killers there? I I, I don't understand. This. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, uh, it's, it's the patriarchy, man. It's holding them down. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, Fort Lauderdale airport killer pleads guilty to avoid the death penalty. Uh, this comes to us from MSN.com. I'm sure you guys remember, uh, this is kind of the reason that they always zip tie our bags closed and everything now, uh, depending on what airline you fly. But this guy basically went, got his check baggage, got his gun and ammo out of it. And then, uh, open fire. Six people were wounded in addition to five that he killed, uh, with a Walther nine millimeter pistol. And basically, yeah, he, didn't have the courage of his convictions, so he pled guilty, and now he just gets to sit in prison for the rest of his natural-born life instead of dying and uh, having his life taken like those that he so ineptly stole. Uh, Kenny, thoughts on this? I think we should bring back public execution. Yeah. I mean, if we start killing some of these guys that uh, decide to take the lives of others, maybe we'll get fewer of them doing it. I mean, it, it, you know, the Bible clearly says an eye for an eye, so we should uh, definitely uh, – you know, go ahead and uh, enact that to try to keep some of this uh, stuff from happening so often. Ken? Uh, I agree almost all the way with everything Kenny said. Uh, you know, I think that um, uh, one, he is a wussy for, like you said, Sean, not uh, sticking to his guns. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> no, pun. <laughs> no pun intended. And uh, uh, owning all of that. But um yeah, I think we need to start making these terrorist crimes and stop labeling them as um, murder, uh, simply murder. Make it domestic terrorism and make these people just disappear, you know, uh, including the kids. Just they go to some federal penitentiary somewhere and we never hear from them, never see them or hear from them again. Yeah, I, I would be fine with either either of those options. I've also got two other options that I would like to suggest. One, The Running Man uh, starring Lou Ferrigno was a fantastic movie <laughs> from, <laughs> from the eighties. <laughs> and uh, I, I, if I think that that would be ideal, you know, have our criminals uh, provide some value to the entertainment or provide entertainment value to the public, I should say. And if we're not ready for that, I think we're getting close, but we may not be fully ready. Then maybe just waterboarding uh, with diesel fuel that, that that's on fire. So one of those things I think is, a I would go for any of those. Yeah. Public stoning falls in there too. Yeah. That's fine. But you know, this guy, what a coward. I'm like, if you're going to, if you're going to be a murderous piece of garbage, just kill yourself too. Uh, let's see. Agreed. Next up, we've got Texas attorney general wants to adopt Israeli model of school security following mass killings. This actually comes to us from USA today. And I had to read it twice. And then I had to go double check what website I was on. Cause I felt like my hit might be Babylon B. Uh, because this actually sounded like a really good idea. Uh, what he wants to do is districts should post train and capable armed guards outside as well as inside schools. They should also consider reducing the number of entrances to the buildings so those guards can monitor traffic. And where feasible, schools should install metal detectors to ensure that nobody can sneak a weapon onto campus. Classroom doors must be made more secure against an attack. Classrooms should be equipped with the means to barricade these doors. Uh, a quote that I'd like to share is that we already require students to participate periodically in fire drills, but the last school fire that killed 10 or more was in 1958. So I've, I've definitely said that many, many times. 
I think our schools are not secure enough. I think they need to be more secure. And uh, Kenny, what are your thoughts here? Well, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, this is uh, something that uh, in you know Israel, um, not only do they have guards, but all, a lot of the teachers may be armed, and you don't know who's armed. So it could be some little old lunch lady who, who's carrying. So you just never know who's going to draw down on you if you decide to do something stupid. You know, they take their protection seriously because they've been under attack for so long. And, you know, we're getting to that, or we've gotten to that point, and we should really start doing the same. I mean, the politicians all have their kids in schools that are protected that way. Why shouldn't our kids get any better? Definitely. Ken? Uh, I think it's a great plan. I think that is less intrusive than a lot of other alternatives that I've seen. Uh, Metal detectors and uh, clear backpacks and uniforms, you know, uh, which all go on in the urban schools, by the way. Uh, These types of things have been going on for years, uh, you know, decades in the urban schools. So now it's making its way out to suburbs. Yeah. Um, Welcome to reality to the rest of the world here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that um, he also makes a good point later in the story where he's talking about um, how we need to be realistic in how we look at our uh, school protection. Uh, Firearms are not going anywhere and we need to open our eyes. And it seems like he's taking a real objective look at the real situation and not trying to politicize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the whole article is written by the uh, AG of Texas and it is, it's a fantastic article. And I, I, I always try to look at my motivations for saying something like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, obviously this is an echo chamber. This is exactly what I talk about, exactly what I think. So there is that, but I think it's just really, I mean, in my opinion, he takes a really, a realistic look at, you know, the reasons why gun control isn't going to work. And then having accepted that as fact, he moves on to actually uh, come up with some ideas of things that, that probably should work. And I, I appreciate that. I, you know, that's one of my problems with this whole gun control argument is, uh, it's all smoke and mirrors. There's really nothing that can be done. It's really just people pushing their political agenda to take over a political party or move their political party and move the other one out. And it's, you know, if you really care about the children, come up with some real logical solutions for these kids, uh, so that they can be safe in their schools. Yeah. Completely 100% agree. All right, uh, that'll do it for our positive-ish news. Uh, Let's move into some other uh, not-so-great news. We've got 15-year-old student injured in Indiana school shooting, 16-year-old suspect in custody. Uh, You know, this is definitely uh, a bad trend, and I hate to see it, but, you know, this is is the world we're living in right now. So, again, he posted on Facebook, said, Today is the day. You'll see this on the news. And... Basically uh, started shooting, shot a girl twice in the stomach, but this one ends in a different way. This one doesn't end with a, a good guy with a gun. This ends with someone who has the courage of their convictions. This ends with someone, to, someone who has the warrior mentality and that warrior mindset. Uh, a teacher rushes the kid, tackles the kid, swats away the gun, is shot three times, abdomen, um, forearm, and one other as well, and basically stops this from happening. Heroic, in my opinion, is the only way to describe this. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, you know, if you read further down in that story, it talks about uh, his buddy saying that as soon as he heard that happened at that school, he knew that it was him. What was the gentleman's name again? I, I don't remember what his name was, uh, which is unfortunate that I don't. But No, I've got it right here. Uh, Jason J- Seaman. Jason Seaman. Uh, All right. J- Jason uh, did a fantastic job in uh, another quote, I believe, is, uh, you know, we talk about heroes. That is a true hero uh, because there was nothing but harm coming his way. He knew it and he still did, uh, took the actions that he did. Without question. And so often I think we throw around the term hero willy nilly, which kind of cheapens the word. But my thought here is that this is truly heroic. He ran towards gunfire uh, to you know, whatever motivations were, whether it was to save the kids, to save himself, to because it was the right thing to do, doesn't matter. He threw himself in the, in the face of sure death and uh, was able to stop something from being much worse than it could have been. Kenny? Absolutely. I mean, it, it had to be obvious to him that he knew he could die doing this, and he went ahead and did it anyway. You know, no regard for his own safety, for his own life. He knew that there were greater things at stake, and he took the actions that a lot of people would not take. And, you know, 
so many people, even in our community, you know, talk a good game, but they won't actually step up and do something when the time comes. And he didn't hesitate. He just went ahead and did it. And that is the true definition of a hero. And we should be hearing more about him. Yeah, completely agree. So uh, to Mr. Seaman, thank you so much for your heroism and uh, for, for being that guy. Uh, that's what we need more of in society. And he's a football coach. All right. Absolutely. So there was a, an opinion piece on Fox News that says the makings of a killer, the three reasons that people kill. And I just thought this might be some interesting discussion. There's a whole big uh, article that kind of talks about it and what it is, but it all generally comes down to uh, financial greed, sexual or relationship lust, or the pursuit of power. So steal, rape, or control are kind of the three that he breaks this down to. And then he compares it to some of the, m- the more recent uh, mass killings and even the gang MS-13. So I thought that this was kind of interesting. Not sure if I 100% agree with it, but I couldn't uh, – in the time that I thought about it, I couldn't come up with anything that – debunked his thoughts here. Uh, do you guys have a chance to read this? And do you have any thoughts? Yes. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah, um, I did read through it. And uh, he definitely, you know, it's based on the premise of MS-13 because this is uh, their motto, um, you know, so steal, rape and control. Um, you know, that's, that's just what they, what they live by. And for the most part, it's true. The only thing that it doesn't account for is somebody who's just mentally deranged. Uh, but it, for someone who is, you know, a, somewhat normal person. I mean, no one that kills is normal in my opinion, but that in all other functions in life, they seem to be normal. Um, I could see these uh, three things being the factors there. So, you know, the recent uh, incident where, you know, the dad was saying that, uh, you know, the, the kid was uh, normal and he must've, you know, something must've happened, which is a cop out, but mm-hmm. you know, it's people like that, that I would say these things apply to um, obviously deranged people are, are, are totally edge cases and, need to be looked at differently. But for all those other people, I, I could see this as uh, definitely being something that we need to try to figure out what the markers are so we can try to identify it earlier. Mm-hmm. Aren't these the prerequisites for uh, working on Wall Street? <laughs> or being a politician. <laughs> or being a, or a lawyer or a politician. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, what's unfortunate about these is all of these are, you know, you see all of these in a capitalist society. Yeah, I mean, you, mm-hmm. you have a, a, some sort of all of these in our capitalist society. So, you know, we're breeding killers and everything we do. Is that what he's saying? Yeah, I, I think so. And yeah, he does talk a lot about uh, unless we as a nation are willing to embrace and promote a worldview that helps us understand the proper role of money and financial stewardship, promotes sexual purity, purity and restraint and helps us place the needs of others ahead of our own desires. We can expect more of the same. So, again, like. I couldn't really necessarily come up with a whole lot to debunk these thoughts, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that I'm, I'm ready to accept them all, but uh, it was an interesting read and definitely got me thinking a bit. Agreed. All righty. Next up, we've got video games set to go on sale June 6th. That lets you play as a school shooter. Uh, this comes to us from fortune.com and it is a game uh, on valve. Or I'm sorry, steam on steam. And let me just read the description here. Active shooter, the simulation, pick your role, gear up and fight or destroy, be the good guy or the bad guy. The choice is yours. Only an active shooter. You'll be able to pick the role of an elite SWAT team member or the actual shooter. Your objective would either be to neutralize the target or be the target slaughter as many civilians as possible, as well as forces that are against you. The choice is yours. I want to offer no commentary on this so far, but I'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, Ken, I'll start with you. Well, I've got a lot of commentary on this. If you look at the number of video games that this company has already put out, they are uh, uh, looking for sensationalism. You know, uh, the sex sales, the violent sales, the uh, radical opinion sales. And it seems like that's what they're playing off of. And it's really sad. It goes back to the story that we just covered. You know, money rules the world. So that's what they're chasing right now. And it doesn't matter who they hurt to come out with things like this. Uh, including their own industry, who has come under fire recently with all of the school shootings as being part of that. So now you come out with a video game that focuses on that uh, in particular. So I, I think it's it's um, uh, it's immature, it's childish, it's stupid. Yeah, I agree, Kenny. Yeah, I see this as, you know, they're exploiting, uh, obviously, what's been going on in the news lately. So taking advantage of that, reaching out to the 
some of the weak-minded individuals out there that may already have this in their mind and want to explore it a little further, um, you know, maybe figure that they can get some training on it. I think most people that are, you know, you're serious gamers that are just out there to play good games, whether they be violent or not, aren't really going to take this game seriously and, uh, you know, take advantage of it unless it's just out of sheer curiosity. But the majority of people I think that will be uh, partaking of this game are going to be those that are already a little bit twisted and we need to watch out for. Could be. So I want to come at it uh, in a little bit of a different angle. I, I don't really care about this game. Like there's, there's all kinds of horrible things that people say, do type, take pictures of and throw out there. Um, there's also games like grand theft auto that are easily as violent, if not more violent and, and racy and, you know, uh, questionable than this game is going to be. Uh, I don't think the video games necessarily dictate what a person is going to do. And I don't think that this game is going to raise a new generation of uh, school murderers or anything like that. I think that this game is just basically exactly what it is. Some people are going to play it. They may laugh because that's, that's their sense of humor. I don't think it's funny. I'm not going to play it, but I also don't really care. The same person that would play this game and think that it's going to go or, and then they're going to go shoot up a school or something like that is the same person that's going to play grand theft auto and, you know, kill a hooker or run over pedestrians and things like that. I think, yeah, it's lame. I don't even think it's that clever of an idea. I think it's kind of silly, but I, I kind of just don't care. Uh, my favorite meme in the universe is the Viking that said, you know, how does it feel to, how does it feel to be so weak that words hurt you? And it's kind of just more of that. In my opinion, I noticed their other game titles are pretty questionable at best, but yeah, I really don't have a problem with this necessarily. I agree. I agree with your, uh, grand theft auto, uh, reference. I, uh, you're right on it, it. They are looking for attention and this is what they're doing to get it and whatever, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think this will be a bestseller by any means. And, uh, the few people who downloaded it out of just pure curiosity, obviously there's going to be some twisted idiots that, uh, that download it and think it's hilarious, but you know, whatever that they're going to do something else. That's just as awful that we may or may not see either way. So, all right. Anything else on that one, guys? I'm all set. <laughs> all right. So Mexico only has one gun store and yet gun violence is soaring. Uh, it's funny. I saw Adam Kraut post this and he's like, uh, I knew that this was going to lead at some point to guns coming from the U S are making Mexican violence soar. And he was not disappointed. Uh, so yes, there is only one gun store. Um, there's buyers must pass months of background checks and be frisked by uniformed soldiers and it's it's run by the army, so they can get guns. They can go there and get guns, but it's obviously a, a, a big kind of huge production for them to do so. But Mexican gun violence is out of out of control. Um, just kind of hu- of a huge problem there. So they may they have got tons of gun control in place, but it doesn't really solve anything. Of course, it's easy to blame it on the United States because the guns are coming in from the United States, but Guess what? They're coming in from already criminals. So I don't know. Uh, Kenny, any, any insight here? Um, yeah. Um, like we were talking about before the, uh, before we went on the air, um, I actually helped to broker a deal years ago for uh, the first gun store in Mexico, which this may be, um, the same one. Um, but it was more of a gun tree club where you were going to have, um, you know, you could purchase firearms, you could use them there on site, but they had to stay locked up on site. You couldn't take them home with you. Um, and it was, you know, a huge deal with state department and all kinds of stuff going on. Um, the guns are, you know, the gun situation in Mexico is very restrictive. That's for legal firearms, but like anywhere else, illegal firearms don't have any regulations. Um, it wasn't uncommon for us to, you know, have people of uh, Hispanic descent coming in buying, you know, 10, 20 guns at a time. And we knew they were going across the border. All we could do was go ahead and alert ATF saying, Hey, this person bought this many guns. We think we know what they're doing with it. And then it was up to them to follow up, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have situations like fast and furious that are going ahead and putting these guns out there. And, you know, who knows what's still going on that we don't, that we're not aware of in, in situations like that. Uh, you know, we, we learned a little bit about it because Brian Terry was killed. Had it not been for that, you know, who knows if we would, we would even know anything about it today. Yeah. Ken? 
Uh, this is a chicken or the egg for me. Uh, you <laughs> know, if, if they weren't selling drugs, they wouldn't need the guns. And if they didn't need the guns, we wouldn't be taking their drugs from them. I mean, you say you're going to give me how many keys of cocaine or, you know, and marijuana and you need to payment, but you'll take it in guns, which I'm already got a whole closet full of because we're the U S and it's like, cool. Okay. I'll give you the, I'll give you these guns for all of this cocaine that I can make money off of. Yeah. You want the guns to stop then stop drugs and gun violence. I mean, and gang violence in your country. And you'd be surprised at how quickly the guns stop flowing in. <laughs> I, just the whole thing is remarkable to me. I'm like, yeah, it's somehow the U S S fault uh, that you have a ton of criminals that, that bring illegal guns into Mexico. Well, guess what? They're going the other way too. And they're the same kind of criminals, you know, people just and, want either protection or a better life or whatever. Just some people are willing to do different things to get what they want. And if our gun culture is so bad, why are you people crawling over a wall to get here? <laughs> yes. Uh, so the story is called the directorate of arms and munition sales. And it, it, uh, it seems kind of crazy. They're allowed to own one pistol and nine rifles as long as they can prove that they belong to gun clubs. Uh, but yeah, again, gun control doesn't equal less crime. It doesn't equal less gun murder or murder committed with guns. It doesn't equal less violent crime. In fact, it probably equals more. If the average everyday citizen in Mexico was able to carry a gun for protection, the amount of those, you know, just senseless murders of innocent people probably would go down is my guess. All right. Absolutely. Next segment is called I'm offended. And the last few weeks, there's been some killer stories in this because I, I almost have to read them all because they're all offending me in some way. I'm being triggered guys. I think, I think I might be a snowflake. Uh Oh, two families of Parkland victims, Sue gun manufacturer and seller of the guns used in the Parkland murders. Um, man, so obviously there's federal law against this. Uh, this is a little bit interesting because there is Florida law that they're filing this under. And uh, there's a 2001 Florida law that prohibits. I'm getting pop-up ads that are blocking my view here. That prohibits <laughs> uh, state and local governments from suing gun manufacturers if their products are used in unlawful ways. That law doesn't mention lawsuits by victims or their families. So here's what I think they're going to do. And they're going to try to get this through. They're going to, it's, it's got a very um, narrow scope to this lawsuit. So they're going to try to do it in Florida. It very well might be ruled in their favor in Florida, but it, you know, obviously we do have that federal law in place. that's going to prevent this, but again, it's, they don't expect to win. I don't think. And I think they're just trying to kind of chip away and make a bunch of noise and get a bunch of publicity. They don't really care if it actually goes anywhere. Uh, thoughts on this gentlemen? Go ahead, Ken. Well, you know, when this happened uh, with Sandy Hook, I looked at it and I said, you know, this is horrible that these lawyers are uh, taking advantage of these family members. Uh, but I'm sure now that uh, these are being funded by uh, people with deeper pockets than the family members uh, to to make these happen. I'm sure these lawyers are being paid for by people with deeper pockets than the family members. Uh, but it is sad that they are influencing these family members to extend this pain that they're already going through, uh, uh, going into a court hearing to hear and see details about it uh, is, is really shameful uh, and uh, unfortunate. Penny? You know, the way I see it is what they're trying to do right now is actually just legitimize the argument, um, just like they did with so many other things before it. You know, we had, um, you know, in the 80s, we had the Brady Bill and, you know, everything else that went with that. And, you know, the attack was against Saturday Night Specials. They got those that legitimize the argument for them to move on and, uh, you know, bring forth the assault weapons bill. You know, you had uh, Hillary Clinton when uh, she was, you know, first lady. She uh, was all for, um, you know, universal health care. And everyone knew it wouldn't go anywhere then, but what do we have now? Universal health care under Obamacare. You know, they understand that they're not going to win now, but by putting it out there 10, 20 years down the road, people are going to go, you know what? That's not such a bad idea. Maybe we should do that. And it's, it's, it's a long game that they're playing and they understand that it's a game they can win if they stay at it. Um, 
you know, enough losses eventually will lead to somebody going, you know what, maybe we should try that because we've tried other things. Yeah. And again, uh, we have the PLCA, the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act, which does protect companies, and manufacturers and dealers from being held liable when their stuff is used in a crime. But, you know, they, they found some wording in a, in a 2001 Florida state law that they're going to exploit to the best of their ability. And you know what? I say, go ahead, do what you need to do. We've been exploiting things with binary triggers and bump fire stocks. I'm, I'm like, the turnabout is fair play. Uh, ultimately, though, this will be ruled down and they will be found uh, if it goes federal, they will have to pay all the court fees uh, t- for the I'm sorry, for the the companies that have to defend against it. So, you know, whatever, I, I'm totally down with it. Do whatever you need to do, make whatever noise you need to make. But we already have a law in place to protect this federally. So we'll see where the state goes. And yeah, what's interesting to me about this is how it, if they were to gain this, how it could affect other businesses. Can you imagine the suits that would go through for negligent use of products all over the place? If it went through on firearms, imagine how it going through on automotive uh, because uh, someone got drunk and crashed a car. And then all of a sudden you could sue the car company because the guy was drunk and crashed into four people and killed them. Uh, yeah, that's, Big business isn't going to let a rule like this go through and, and set a precedence. No, no, and I mean, and it shouldn't. I mean, these laws exist because people would just uh, we're so litigious as a as a society, and in some cases it, it's proper, in some cases it's improper. I think we, as thinking critical, critically thinking adults, can kind of make those decisions on our own as to what is appropriate and what isn't. But uh, yeah, I just I, I don't get wanting to blame a company that manufactured a product. Like it, it just doesn't make sense to me. The Washington post talks about a naked man who lunged at a police officer after being tased needed help, not death. Uh, so this happened in Richmond. The police officer is under investigation after he shot and killed an unarmed naked man who lunged at him during confrontation earlier this month. And I got to say, I'm getting real sick of stories like this purely because these cops have to make these split second decisions and uh, you've got a naked guy lunging at you. You have no idea what could possibly happen in the next milliseconds and you carry a firearm to be used to lethally defend if necessary. These are just split second decisions that have to be made. He doesn't know what this guy's history is. The family says, Oh, well they should have tased him and helped him. No, I'm sorry. This is a police officer rolling into a situation that is completely unknown to him and he has to react thoughts on this guys. Well, yeah, this is a uh, interesting one for me because, you know, the, the first thing you'd think of is, you know, another African-American being shot by a cop. Well, I, I'm sorry. If a police officer pulls up, he tells you to stop several times. He takes out his taser and tases you several times. Uh, at that point, if I've tased you and you didn't go down, I know a physical confrontation is not going to go well for me. So mm-hmm. I have to take the appropriate steps. It sounds to me like this guy gave, you know, and I don't know what was going on with the guy. It sounds like his family doesn't even know what was going on with him, uh, how he ended up in this situation. But for us to assume that the police officer should take a beating have his gun taken away from him, possibly have himself killed because he didn't want to shoot the guy who was definitely something was wrong. Uh, I think that's just flat out wrong. You know, sometimes people need to be shot and, you know, and that was one of those times. Yeah. It sucks. But I mean, 18 seconds is from the, the officer making contact to the time the man was dead in the street, 18 seconds. Uh, It's incredibly short amount of time. Kenny. Yeah, watching the video, you see the guy is rolling around in the street at first when the officer walks up. You know, he, he goes ahead and addresses the suspect, and the guy gets up, starts charging at him. He tases him, fires both uh, cartridges out of his taser to no effect. The guy is naked, so it wasn't like clothes were an issue where, you know, it got caught in the clothes. You know, he tagged the guy, and the guy was completely unfazed by it. So, yeah, he did the right thing. I mean, this guy was, was you know, not going to be stopped any other way. I don't care what he had, what he could have done. There was no way he was going to stop him if all those methods failed. So he, you know, he shot, um, you know, he stopped the threat. Unfortunately, the guy died, but that's what happens when you play stupid games. Yeah. And I, even if the guy is completely innocent, well, let's say that this guy, he was some kind of mental breakdown, allergic reaction. 
I, I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter. You cannot honestly expect the police of this of this nation to have to make these decisions in a split second and have to know all the history of of, of a situation. All they really know is is this person a threat to myself or the people around me, and do I need to take action to stop him from causing uh, serious bodily harm or death to to myself or the people around me? Uh, yeah. it's, it's just it's it's an impossible situation. If you're saying that a cop should always use a less lethal option, then we're going to see a huge decrease in the amount of cops in the United States. Just plain and simple. No one's going to want to do a job where their life is less important than someone who might be on drugs or, you know, it, it just it, it's completely ridiculous to me. Agreed. We're already seeing issues with, you know, departments not being able to hire. And, uh, you know, it's it's just sad that, you know, we're every almost every week we're reporting on officers that are being killed by people. So this is what they see that they're up against. And you have someone like this, you know, and they're supposed to, you know, go ahead and try to reach out and hug him and sing Kumbaya. I mean, it doesn't work. And what is uh, later in the story, uh, the, the family member says, you know, uh, police off, uh, police departments used to need to change their policies on uh, uh, how to deal with situations like this. And my question is always give me solutions then as to what you think a good policy would change would be for this. You know, let the guy run around and hurt somebody else, uh, bring former officers in and subdue him with billy clubs. I think we've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, seen people yeah. chasing. What are they looking for? Yeah, I, great question. I don't know. And it just doesn't seem – I don't see how you can possibly ask an, off, an officer who has split second to make a decision to always err on the side of nonlethal. I mean it just doesn't make sense. We're, we would see a huge spike in officer deaths and uh, we would see a huge spike – in officers leaving the profession for something that doesn't guarantee they're going to be killed in the line of duty. Ah, oh, goodness. Anyway, let's talk about something that's much less offensive. I mean, much more offensive. So Publix, which is a grocery store chain, uh, chain in, in Florida and I believe other parts of the country, but apparently they had given contributions to a Florida governor candidate, Adam Putnam, and he is a self-proclaimed proud NRA sellout. To which David Hogg, uh, you may have heard that name before, he was uh, attended Parkland uh, when when the murders happened there, wanted to do a die-in, which is where a bunch of kids go and lay on the floor of the supermarket and impede people from doing their daily business. I saw a couple funny things. Uh, one, David Hogg posted a picture of people just shopping around the, the die-in participants, and someone replied, Yes, when my kids have a tantrum on the floor, I ignore them too. I thought that was pretty great. But basically what happened is uh, – hey, Kenny, I'm going to let you finish this one because you pointed out that uh, this had some adverse side effects. Yeah, I just saw something today where apparently um, Publix Market has decided to pull all contributions, not just to that one candidate. So apparently they also contributed to um, – uh, Planned Parenthood and some LGBT issues. So now those things that these students are normally supportive of are also being affected by their actions. So way to go on them. They, you know, hurt themselves in the process and, and uh, their causes. Ken? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, it's um, completely ridiculous. This entire thing is completely ridiculous. Uh, I think that um, if you're going to expend that type of energy, you might want to do it in a way that uh, actually – show some results a lot sooner than what you're doing. Uh, if you want your school to be protected, then uh, protest that you actually have security guards who do their job are there. Uh, that that would make a lot more sense to me that you're in front of the police department saying that, you know, we want armed security that is actually going to do their job. Uh, there are so many other things they should be protesting other than that. And like I said before, you know, if you, you be careful what you ask for, because Clear backpacks, uniforms, metal detectors are all out there. And, you know, suburban schools are not used to having to walk through a metal detector in the morning, come in 15 minutes early to walk through a metal detector or have a a random locker search, you know, where your weed is confiscated. And, you know, these are things that a suburban school is not used to. Be careful what you're asking for out there. Completely, 100 percent agree. And and honestly, look. I don't care one lick about David Hogg. I think he's a complete moron. I've watched videos of him. I have no problem with kids that want to be 
involved. I have no problem. But he's just a crude little loudmouth. And sorry, Kenny. But uh, yeah, I, I cannot stand David Hogg. And this is just more stupidity from someone who doesn't understand life in the real world. Yeah, at this point, I don't think he actually wants uh, security the way that, uh, you know, it's being proposed. I think it's just, you know, we need to do something to get rid of the NRA. And that has to do with the people that are handling him and, you know, having him go out and, and do their bidding for them. You know, he he's loving the limelight and he's doing whatever he can to stay in it. But it's really the people behind him that, uh, you know, they could care less about these kids being killed. They just want to do away with the NRA and get rid of guns. Could not agree more. All right, guys, uh, next up is the full auto news segment. And this is always fun because there's just some crazy stuff down here. So, uh, Ken, I'm going to start off with your story. So go ahead and let us know what it was about. Well, this story is about a, uh, a woman that was pulled over by a, a tech, uh, Texas officer. And uh, later on, she accused him of raping her. So if you uh, and after after a while, the body cam footage came out and it showed uh, what really happened and nothing, you know, none of her allegations were true. But if you read the story, she she must have pulled out a penthouse, uh, old penthouse publication and uh, and read it about, you know, I, I the, the cop pulled me over and it was a steamy encounter. He drove me behind the uh, store. My boyfriend <laughs> came. <laughs> yeah, it turned into this steamy. Uh, this story, whatever she was drinking, had a long-lasting effect on her. She was pulled over for drinking, and uh, you know, I, it's amazing the uh, the yarn she she wove from this. So uh, it was a uh, it, it was an interesting story. And if it happened the way that it did, she could make millions off of selling it to TV. But um, Actually, she probably still could because it's a great movie of the week. <laughs> oh, man. I love body cams specifically for this reason. And Absolutely. I, this actually happened not too far from me. Gosh. Um, this is my neck of the woods. Were and it's you funny there? because out here, <laughs> I was not there. No. no, sorry. I wasn't involved in the steamy sorted affair. <sighs> um, but uh, it's funny because out here um, during uh, holiday weekends and big weekends like that, um, they have what they call no refusal, meaning if there's any question whether you are under the influence or not, you go to jail and they sort it out later. Um, there's no discretion to the officer whether you were under the influence. So you know, regardless of what was said under no refusal, you're going. So the allegations that are made, you know, that just makes it even more absurd. Wow. And then uh, a little bit of social justice, miss, miss social, social justice. I'm not even sure how to say this, but misapplied social justice. They basically found out about this posted on social media. People started sharing the officer's name and phone number and linking to his Facebook. Well, it was the wrong officer. So they were all just, you know, torches and pitchforks at the wrong people. Yeah. You gotta love uh, social media. Sometimes it's, um, <laughs> Uh, their social media is the voice of people who really shouldn't have a voice. Yeah, it definitely could. <laughs> so exactly on this one, I actually read the story first and then watched the video. I mean, they're literally not even in the same genre, much less the same chapter. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather have been her story instead of his? <laughs> yes. Wasn't hers much more exciting than his? <laughs> exactly. Hers, hers would start out uh, in a smoke filled room of, of all the interstates. And all yeah. the cops, he, he chose me. Hear, hear that, Darren? Darren? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Exactly. Fifty Shades of Cop Cars. Yep. <laughs> uh, Kenny, which one did you have? Um, Tennessee representative says porn is to blame for school shootings. <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know how you make the leap from one to the other. I mean – if they're shooting anything, it's not going to be guns. No, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't yeah, even. It's I, that's quite a stretch. Okay. Does she say at any point like how she comes to that stretch, or she's just like it's porn? It's all porn. Um, it. She just thinks that for some reason it's like you know the gateway drug to school shootings. I mean, I, I never saw reading the article. Uh, Grant, I did not listen to the interview. No, uh, but reading the article, um, I couldn't see anywhere that there was a logical correlation between the two. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see it either. I did not listen either because I don't 
Uh, I'm trying to save my brain cells uh, well, for, for whiskey. Clearly, she had, does not watch porn or has not indulged herself because that takes – away, you know, it makes you relax. You're, you want to sleep afterwards. You don't want to go out and kill people. Yeah. You're, you're feeling too good. Yeah. Afterwards, you don't do that. You got to clean up. You got, yeah, there's no shooting after that. <laughs> no, you're too tired. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, looking at her, I don't think she, she knows much about sex to begin with. So probably. Yeah. You're probably right. Yeah. So, uh, she says that it's porn. Experts actually say it's poor social, economic and cultural conditions and, uh, yeah, I, I think that I disagree with her and I kind of agree with the, them that say that. So, well, congratulations. We've elected another idiot. Where is this? Uh, Tennessee even. So representative Diane Black from Tennessee, if she is your, your representative, you should, uh, let her know that she is a silly, silly human being. Yeah. Well, doesn't Tennessee only have one DNA sample for everyone? <laughs> Just branches <laughs> off the same sample. Hey, that's where our home office is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, guys, in the uh, Dear Penthouse, I wouldn't believe it if it didn't actually happen to me, Files. It's a uh, black object strikes car. 18 miles later, driver finds handgun sticking out of the bumper. And, yeah, the, this is – is it a Springfield? I'm trying to yeah, tell. Yeah, it's next Yeah, yeah. So it has the grip zone and now it has the bumper zone as well. See, I did want it until – I want a gun to do that until then. No, I don't want it. Yeah, I uh, I am 100% with you. I don't want a Springfield. However, I would take a Springfield if it lodged itself in the front of my car. I, I think that this is like none of this, this kind of cool stuff. This is Willy Wonka. This is Charlie's golden ticket. Kind of rare. You know, I never find guns in the bushes. They don't stick in my car. And I'm disappointed, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you know, it's it's a clean gun, too. So, you know, <laughs> I, you see it in the bumper, you take it and you go, oh, sweet. Yeah, I got a gun. Yeah, amazing. I think this is where the left is always talking about guns on the streets. That's where they are. Oh yeah, yeah. this must be one of those gun show <laughs> loopholes. Uh, the the person drove with it for eighteen miles, which I mean that's a lot of brandishing going on. I feel like the the cops probably need to get involved. He was obviously brandishing this firearm. I- I think it proves that guns don't kill people because I mean, in eighteen miles, it had plenty of opportunities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, there was another one. Austin landing home goods. A man shoots himself because he had his gun improperly holstered. Apparently, he had taken paper, and uh, the holster was not made for the gun that he was carrying, but he filled it with paper to make the gun fit and actually shot himself. So In the groin. <laughs> in the groin of all the terrible places to get shot, of all the huge arteries that run through there, and uh, just terrible. So, guys – Get holsters that fit. I think it's very, very important. Natural selection. God <laughs> saw what was going on, said we need to stop the gene pool here, and it shot him in the groin. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, when you put it that way, I'm like, yes, this is awesome. This is exactly yeah. what should happen. <laughs> oh, man. You should start selling those holsters. Yeah. So let me ask you guys this. If, if a gun actually came be bopping along the street and jammed itself into your car, would you report it or would you just be like, cool, new gun? In my official capacity, in my co- official capacity as the uh, creative director for Avalon Outdoors, I would absolutely, and an in, NRA in instructor, I would absolutely report that gun, take it into the police station and turn it in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Kenny, <laughs> what are your thoughts here? Um. You know, there are plenty of places to sell barrels so that this way, if it was used in, in any nefarious uh, activity, um, it won't be traced back to me if I replace that barrel. <laughs> that's that, that is a, that's a good point. And I, I got to be like Ken. I have to say that, you know, in my official capacity as the president of the Firearms Radio Network and the president of We Like Shooting Incorporated, uh, I would absolutely keep this gun forever and consider it a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't be showing it to you the next time I saw you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I love it. All right, guys, that'll do for the stories tonight. Uh, Ken Ross, where can everyone find you and what have you guys been up to? Uh, You know, Athlon has been up to a lot. We've uh, just had our Ballistics Best Awards where we gave out uh, several awards to uh, a number of manufacturers in the firearms industry, uh, most of them deserving 
uh, all of them deserving, I should say. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spill some dirt. Yeah, no, all of them deserving. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're putting out 42 publications a year. We've got four websites and we're all over social media. If you're not a, you know, a, if ballistic magazine, uh, we've got tacticallife.com, we've got, uh, personal defense world.com and, uh, survivor's edge. Uh, go out and check our websites out. You know, I, I know magazine is, uh, old school. But, um, you know, I think we're doing some good work and I think it would benefit you guys to pick them up. And, you know, uh, something's going on in the industry now where a number of stores aren't carrying uh, gun magazines anymore. So please make sure you get out and subscribe. And, uh, you know, if you don't see it at your local uh, uh, drugstore or grocery store, make sure you get out and subscribe to our publications. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing some good work and I'd love for you to see it. Yeah, I completely agree. So I've been, uh, been getting the magazines here in the office now and I find myself just kind of browsing through them and glancing like historically I've been kind of an e-reader. Like I read my books online and I read them on my phone and whatnot, but I got to say that there is something to it. There's something just uh, very visceral about having the magazine, breaking it out, not having to worry about my battery or anything else, just opening it and taking a look through it. And, uh, the, I just got three the other day. I've been going through them like as I have time, just gorgeous, gorgeous work and uh, good articles and stuff too. I think a lot of times, Based on stuff that I've read in the past, I, I kind of expected it to be glorified. The R51 is the most fantastic firearm in history, but I haven't seen any of that stuff in the Athlon publications at all. Yeah, we're working on we're working really hard to uh, to be different. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of our publications, you know, to keep them different. Uh, you know, there's a lot of arguing back and forth, which is I believe is good. You know, talking about the types of stories we're going to cover and the way that we cover them, uh, and those are conversations that need to be had. Uh, we're putting we're putting out some good stuff. Uh, we're you know, come check us out. And if you want to get a hold of me, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Uh, not much. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I, Ken Ross. Uh, you can find me anywhere on there, K E N R O S S. I love it. And I got to say that uh, Ballistic Life, or I'm sorry, Ballistic Magazine and Tactical Life uh, both share the We Like Shooting show every week. And Absolutely. I got to yeah. say that whoever's writing your copy for these for these episodes is doing an amazing job. Everyone I read, I'm like, that is hilarious. I wish I could write that well. Oh, you know what? I thought you were writing it. <laughs> I am not. Someone is listening to these and writing that writing that for us. Oh man, I'll find out who's doing that for you then, because I sure did think you were writing it. I said, "Oh, good job, son." I know they're great. They uh, uh, there was a quote that was in uh, last week's episode, or not a, not even a quote. They said something about Ben Steger uh, being incredibly foul mouthed and having no filter, but that they absolutely loved it, and I could not agree more. <laughs> Well, you know, and that is one of the things that I neglected to mention. Uh, you know, we are working with uh, the Firearms Radio Network. Uh, we are uh, you know, sharing some content. And, uh, you know, this isn't a uh, a love fest by any means. You know, if, if we hated each other, Sean and I would definitely be talking about each other at some point going, yeah, that sucks, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I, there's, there's an opportunity for us to do some great things. And I think we're moving in that direction. So also check out the Firearms Radio Network content on our sites. Uh, you know, it's a perfect fit. All right. I love it, man. Great to have you here. I hope to have you back often. I will be back as often as you'll have me. All right, Kenny, you heard it. So, Kenny, what have you been up to? Where can people find you? Um, you know, just uh, pretty much anywhere that uh, you can find the name Kenny Ortega. Uh, I'm, don't confuse me with that other choreographer director that uh, <laughs> may or may not be into women. Um, but, uh, just, <laughs> How could um, I ever confuse Kenny you Ortega with that? on Facebook. Uh, not that guy on firearms because I'm not that guy. <laughs> or um, I mean. And, uh, just all over the, you know, firearms radio network pages, uh, whether, you know, it'd be, uh, this week in guns or we like shooting, um, Patreon page, um, all over the place there. And I just had to clarify. So Sean, you only read those magazines for the articles, right? Uh, well, no, it's for the gun porn. Okay. They're all still, so, uh, aren't they, Sean? Well, maybe, but it's, it, it's saliva. <laughs> it's not what you guys think. <laughs> Okay, there was some hot chicks in one of them, but come on, guys. You're putting me on the spot here. No, I love it. And, Kenny, uh, I say it every single week that could not do this show without you. I got to say, if you guys listen to This Week in Guns and you appreciate it, after Jake left, the only reason this show still exists is because of Kenny Ortega. So fantastic job, Kenny. Keep up the fantastic work. I do appreciate you. Thank and you. Got, 
guys, you can leave your feedback. I uh, think, I think the show is on a great path now. Uh, leave your feedback in iTunes, Facebook reviews, wherever we appreciate the reviews. Uh, I'm actually going to start reading a couple of them on the show. Uh, because I like them and I think you should hear them as well. So they're, they're fantastic. You can search for This Week in Guns in iTunes or uh, This Week in Guns or the Firearms Radio Network on Facebook. Find us all over the place. Um, obviously, check out our advertisers, Patriot Patch Company and Manticore Arms. ManticoreArms.com. Coupon code is TWG10. And uh, give them a look. See if they have anything that you might like. I have a feeling that they do. Check out, check out Athlon Outdoors, all their websites, all their magazines. I'm enjoying it all. And uh, it's, a, it's a match made in heaven, in my opinion. So go check it out. Uh, don't forget, guys. This Week in Guns is produced by Kenny Ortega and is a production of the Firearms Radio Network. We'll catch you next week.